Good evening. Welcome to the Trinity Gardens Church of Christ Wednesday night Bible study. We're delighted that you're here tonight, that you've come back to join us as we kick off our fall season, our fall quarter. We want to express our appreciation to your last quarter teacher, Brother Marv Thorne, for uh, getting up to the bat and knocking the ball out of the park. We thank you for your participation with him as you studied the will to win. God bless you. Over the last year, we have alternated quarters with a topical study one quarter and a textual study uh, the next quarter. We are now preparing to change the uh, format of our Wednesday night Bible study. The, this uh, online has been available to you for more than a year now, and we are now seeing it as a permanent fixture here at the Trinity Gardens Church of Christ. And so we're looking at ways to enhance how we might effectively help you in your study of the Bible. So it is designed, this class, online class, is designed for Bible study. And so we want to continue to seek out ways that we might help you do that. We've basically been in what I refer to as a monologue format. It's been one person, either Brother Tim Daniels, the senior minister, or one of the ministerial team members, myself, or Brother Thorne, who has come to you in a monologue in our desire that you continue with that uh, in your house churches or in the groups within your home uh, that you carry out or carry on, I should say, a discussion, which is what we will continue to encourage you to do. So we will continue to use a a, a 30 minute format. It should run basically from about seven to seven thirty on Wednesday nights. And we would encourage you to be prepared to continue from at least seven thirty to eight o'clock in your uh, discussion. So we have been using a monologue format. We're going to move to a dialogue or a conversational format. We will probably start our new format sometime during the month of November. Meanwhile, I'll spend some time with you, uh, getting you ready, uh, getting your input. You can also help shape what this new format is going to look like, but it will entail a, uh, a team of people uh, sitting together in Bible study, in Bible exploration, in their search of truth, and you'll get chance to witness that experience in this small group, and then you will be encouraged to replicate or duplicate uh, that experience in your small group. So Bible study is designed for, for our being able to search out those things that we are not sure on, those things that we are not clear about, those things that we have questions about. Sometimes we, we're not sure what we believe or understand something to be. And unfortunately, too many times within the context of the church, we've not been able to just say, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't, I don't know if I believe the same thing I'm hearing you say you believe. And, and we've not allowed a context that allowed people to be honest in their search of truth to be honest in their search of God's will for their life, which is what Bible study is. Paul tells us to, to study, study over there in 1 Timothy 3, 16, to study, to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing or discerning the will of God. So the, it, it, it is a study. It is a surge. And sometimes uh, we, we find out that something we once believed to be true was faulty, our understanding. Thus, our belief system is not perfect. We are always evolving and searching 
the unsearchable riches of God, that we might know him, that we might walk in his way, that we might walk in his will, that we might walk in his light. And so Bible study should certainly be Bible study. And so we're going to uh, create that context uh, in the month of November. Again, we'll kick it off sometime during the month of November. Right now we're building the set and getting prepared for the new platform. So we invite you to anticipate that. I'll be sharing with you ways that you can help to shape that because one of the things we do want to make sure that remains a part of how we do this is we want it to be interactive. Even though we're located throughout Houston or throughout Texas or wherever you might be uh, joining us, we want to have some interaction between those of us who are on site initiating the Bible study and those of you who are scattered throughout participating in the Bible study. And so we're setting up a way that that can be done also and will give you an opportunity to participate in putting forth suggestions and thoughts in terms of how we might best serve you in your effort to study and to know God's word. So we're excited about it. We're looking forward to it. And uh, in the weeks to come, I'll share more with you as we get close to that time. And again, I'll receive uh, suggestions from you as well. Pray with me tonight as we get ready uh, to kind of start setting the framework for what that's going to look like. Our Father and our God, we're thankful to Jesus, our Savior, for his life, for his example, and most of all, for the sacrifice of his life for the redemption of the world. We thank you for our, our salvation and for living in the steadfastness of your love. We thank you for the times in which we live, and we pray, dear Lord, that you will bless us in these times, that we might walk in your will and that we might walk in your way, that we might seek your way, that we might know you, dear Father, that we might exercise your divine wisdom and guidance in our daily walk. Be with us tonight, open our hearts and our minds that we might receive with meekness your engrafted word, which is able to save all of our souls. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, just to kind of set the framework for what this is going to look like, because I want you to understand, uh, again, this is to promote and to complement the Bible studies that you are uh, involved in within your own four walls. And that could be both in your small group settings, that could be your family, and it could be in your individual study. So this, this, this should really support both of those. But it's in order to help us get a better understanding. So this Bible study is not or should not be designed for argumentative purposes. It, it ought not be designed for people to show how much they know. It's not even the teacher. This is not about how much I know or how much anyone knows. It's, it's, it's an effort to know him and to discern God's will for our life and to be able to say to our brothers and sisters, uh, help, help me in, in your understanding of this as I seek to come to my understanding or to mature my understanding. And I, I, I've been teaching and preaching now for 50 years. And I can assure you, as I look back over those 50 years of preaching and teaching, I, I, I've taught some things and I've thought some things and I believe some things at the time that I believed as sure as I believe anything today. But I no longer see it the way I saw it 10, 15 20 years ago, or sometime just a year ago. Uh, so we are growing in our faith. As Peter says, we're, we're adding to our faith. And uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing God's word. So, so let's, 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 let's start with a passage in uh, Proverbs chapter 4. It's one that you'll be quite familiar with, but I want to start with it tonight. Proverbs chapter 4. And we'll look at verse number seven. This has been a favorite of mine over the years. In Proverbs 4, 7, the Bible says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. 
Though it costs all you have, get an understanding. Wisdom, the King James says, wisdom is a pr principal thing. But in all of thy getting, get an understanding. That's, that's when we're studying the word of God, when we're having Bible study, again, it's not about what I know. It's not about how smart somebody is. It's not about Bible boxing. It's not about being argumentative. It's about getting an understanding, seeking to understand what, what does the, what does the word mean? What does the author mean here? What did he mean at the time that he wrote this, this book? What did he mean to say to the audience to which he had in mind when he wrote that? And what are the implications for us some thousands of years later? So what's the immediate context and what's the broader context? Sometimes that understanding is easier to come to than it is others. There are topics, there are subjects that will forever be hard, Paul says, or Peter says, hard to understand. So sometimes we never reach 100% certainty in our human efforts. We give it our best effort. There are times in Bible study when we ought to be honest enough to say uh, there are those who hold this position and there are those who hold that position. And, 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 and I may favor one position and the other, other or the other, but I certainly am not at a place where I could say my position is correct and those who hold an opposite or a different position, uh, is th their, their position is wrong. Now, I, I know it's been our tradition to believe that we're right and that we've crossed all our T's and we've dotted all our I's and if we land on it, that's the answer. But truly, true Bible study is an effort to get an understanding. Let's look at a couple of passages and, and, and we'll bid you a good evening this first Wednesday in the month of October. Let's go. I'm going to look at three passages and bid you a good evening. The first one's going to be in Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8. Let's we'll see what we got here. Nehemiah chapter 8. They're rebuilding Jerusalem. They're having what I call a restoration movement a revival, if you will. The people of God have come back to Jerusalem and they want to reestablish their faith, reclaim their allegiance and their loyalty to God after being in exile. They're back home in Jerusalem. The temple has been rebuilt and now they're focused on understanding the word. Look at verse number eight, chapter eight. And I just want to use that one verse in Nehemiah chapter eight, verse eight, the Bible says they read speaking of the priest, Ezra and others, they read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Here they were coming back to Jerusalem wanting a fresh start, wanting to be faithful to God. And, and, and part of being faithful to God is listening to his word, letting him speak to us through his word. And so they started this new journey, gathering the assembly together, standing up, taking turns, reading from the book of the law. And then explaining because the people had been uh, in exile, because the people had drifted from the teachings of God, the priests wanted to refocus and reestablish their commitment to the Lord by teaching them the word of God. And so the Bible says that they, they read aloud and made sure that they were making it clear so that the people could have 
and understanding. That's kind of what Bible study ought to be about. It ought to be about reading the word and trying to have a clear understanding. Now, much of it is clear. When we compare passages to passages, when we align the central theme of the Bible, when we look at what's sometimes referred to as eisegesis, eisegesis in the text, looking at the text, its original meaning, and, and much of it is clear when we study, we can understand the Bible. It's not something we can't understand. I, I always compare it to a, a football, because if you don't watch football, if you don't like football, if you don't know anything about football, it can seem quite ridiculous to, when you sit down and try to look at it. If you don't know what their purpose is, if you don't know what they're uh, attempting to do, if you don't know what the objective of the game is, how you win, how you lose, how you foul, if you don't understand the game, it looks it looked like a bunch of grown men who are running in circles and you think to yourself, that's ridiculous. But once you start understanding the game, once you understand how a team uh, plays on offense and how a team plays on defense and how a team continues to possess the ball and what the immediate goal, and what the long term, once you understand how the game is played, all of a sudden it makes all the sense in the world. Well, that's what Bible study is. It's, 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 it's giving people an opportunity to understand the Bible. How, how does it unfold? When we talk about the 66 books of the Bible, when we talk about those men over centuries who were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this text, how do you and I today, not, not simply preachers, but how does the everyday member of the body of Christ have the opportunity to study the Bible for their understanding? And that's what we're going to do. That's the uh, uh, the new the new platform will be really to encourage you to become masters of your own soul. Let's look at another passage. This is a new test a New Testament passage, and uh, so I want to go over to the Book of Acts, and I want to look at this same idea. Acts chapter eight. We were in Nehemiah eight. Let's go to Acts chapter eight. We'll go a little deeper into the uh, chapter here. Let's start at around verse number twenty. I believe or want Acts 26. Now, this is this, this is an interesting story. It really shows a, a, a man at the beginning of his becoming a Christian. So here is a man who, at the point in which we meet him in Acts chapter 8, he doesn't know Christ. He doesn't understand what it is to be a Christian. He doesn't seem to even have a real good grasp of the Old Testament teachings. And so he's seeking, he, he, he wants a better understanding. So when we meet him, the Bible tells us he is riding in his chariot. So here's a man riding in his chariot, going from one town to another town. And while he's riding in the chariot, he's reading from one of the Old Testament prophet books, the book of Isaiah. Now let's pick up the story in verse number 26, Acts 8 and verse number 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So we have Philip, who is a teacher or a preacher, if you will. And, and, and I like the way the Bible says that the that the, the angel of the Lord, or he was prompted, if you will, by the Lord to go a certain direction. And sometimes the Lord will prompt us or provide the means by which we encounter someone who we did not expect to encounter. Look at verse number 27. So the Bible says that Philip started out on his way. He met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, which means the queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. Now that, that, that's the context, folks. Here is Philip being prompted by 
the Holy Spirit to go travel a certain road. Now he he's not really clear of why he's prompted to do it, but he responds to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever have you ever done something and said something told me? You see, sometimes we receive a prompting, and, and we might we, we we may not even be clear why we've been prompted. I I I I, I remember uh, about a year ago. I. I have a good friend who had been ill, seriously ill, and uh, had been on a recovery process and was still in the midst of struggling, had been released from the hospital, was going through some uh, unsettling times. And, and, and I visited with another friend about that friend. We were both concerned about our friend and we were talking about him. And something prompted me to ask this friend, have you spoken to him today? And he told me, no, I, I have not spoken to him today. And something prompted me that I needed to speak to him that very day. And so we both got busy trying to get hold to him. Neither one of us could get hold to him. He didn't respond to phone calls. We, we, we start trying to figure out where he was located. We, we, we finally figured out where he was located and uh, sent a, a special message. He, he actually was, was in a, a hotel. We sent a message, and uh, he didn't respond to the answering the hotel phone, and we urged the clerk at the hotel to go check on his welfare. And we told the clerk that he had been ill, and we were concerned about him, and we just wanted her to go check on his welfare. And sure enough, he was having a medical crisis, unable to respond to his phone. They had to call 911, and our friend uh, survived that episode. Prompted, prompted to do, the, 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 I, there was a prompting in me to be concerned about him that day. Never done that before, but that day, I listened to the prompting. And so here, here, here was Philip the preacher, prompted to travel a certain direction, and in his travels, the Bible says, he met this Ethiopian eunuch, doesn't give us his name, simply describes him by his position. He meets this important man, this wealthy man, this man of high social status, who the Bible says is returning from worshiping. So here is a man seeking to know God on his way back home, still reading after leaving church, if you will, leaving worship, if you will. He's reading the book of Isaiah. Let's pick up the story now. The spirit told Philip, that's that prompting again. The spirit, the spirit told Philip in verse number 29, go to that chariot and stay near it. You see, sometimes the Lord, I, now, now this is a whole different sermon, but I'm gonna just drop this while I'm going by. Sometimes the Lord prompts us to go and he doesn't give us the details until we respond to the first prompting. If we don't respond to the general prompting to go, then there's no further assignment on details. In Matthew 28, we have a great commission. Jesus said to the disciples, go into all the world, teach every nation, baptize them in the name of the Father. That was a general prompting. We are prompted to always be on the lookout for somebody the Lord wants us to bless. For somebody, the Lord might want us to teach. For somebody, the Lord might want us to save. Or in the case of my friend, for somebody, the Lord may need us to intervene. We've got to follow the Lord's prompting to go. And then the specific details of our assignment will come later. So here, 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 here are the details to his assignment. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Here we go again. In their mind, they read in the book of the law so that the people could understand. Here's a man already reading in the book of Isaiah, but the teacher or the preacher or the Christian who encounters him says, do you understand? Wisdom is a principal thing. All of us want to be wiser. But do you understand what you're reading? It's, it's not enough 
to just read the Bible, do you have a grasp of understanding? So he asks him, he says, do you understand what you're reading? Listen to uh, his response in verse 31. The man said, how can I unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. So he invited Philip, the teacher. He says, no, I, I can't understand this by myself. Bible study is when we get support. When we get others who help us understand how the Bible is laid out, how the Bible is understood, how the Bible should be approached, how the Old Testament relates to the New Testament. Once we begin to understand the Bible, we can then dig into a specific passage and start understanding the passage. Watch this. Look at verse 32. This is, the, this is the passage of scripture this man was reading when the teacher met him. In verse 32, this is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch, verse number 34, the eunuch asked Philip, the teacher, tell me, please, who is this the prophet is talking about? Himself or someone else? That's Bible study, friends. It's when we read the Bible and we say, now, who's talking here? Who are they talking about? Who are they talking to? This man understand the basic fundamentals of how to approach the scriptures. He simply asked the teacher, I, I, I'm reading this passage, is this man speaking of himself or is he talking about someone else? And I love the next verse, verse 30, uh, verse 35 says, then Philip began at the very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus Christ. He was a man searching. He wanted to know God, and God is introduced to us through the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And so Philip took the scriptures, answered the man's questions, helped the man come to his own understanding, and taught him about Jesus from that passage in Isaiah. And then verse number 36 says, as they traveled along on the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And on that very day, he became a New Testament Christian. That's what Bible study for. It's, it's, it's to help us find the Lord and then to add to our faith and grow when we do find the Lord. I want to close with a passage in Ephesians. So you'll go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and we'll just start quickly at verse number 1 and wrap up our thinking for the day. In Ephesians 3 verse 1, Paul says, For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you've heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation. And my friends, it can be mysterious when you don't understand the Bible. When you don't understand the revelation of the Bible, it could be as confusing as a football game when you don't know anything about football. He went on to say, as I have already written briefly, verse number four says, in reading this, then you will be able to understand my insights into the mystery. Paul says, when you read these books that I'm sending you, these letters that I'm sending you, it's to help you understand my insight into the mystery of Jesus Christ. My friends, God is not a mystery that we cannot understand. Being a Christian is not a mystical life that we cannot understand. And it doesn't have to be a religious life that has no real meaning. It needs to be a purposeful life. Our walk with God should make us powerful. It should give us wisdom. When we understand how God works and how he's at work in our life, 
Two things we want to know. What? What is God doing in the world? And how can I participate in that? And what is God doing through me or by me or in me? And how can I participate in that? They read. They asked questions. They gave the understanding. We're going to create a platform moving from monologue to dialogue to discussion because that's what Bible study is. We want you to be able to ask questions and we're going to structure it so that you can actually submit questions to us, but so you can also discuss questions in your home Bible study. We don't simply need professionals understanding the Bible. Each of us need to understand how to read the roadmap which will lead us home. God bless you. I'm excited. We're looking forward to it. Welcome again to this, our fall start, this first Wednesday night in October. And I know all of you don't view this on Wednesday night. Some of you view it later in the week, but we welcome you. And we look forward over the next few weeks, framing what this new format will look, for, look like. And uh, sometime in the month of November, uh, we're going to kick off our new format, which will involve a, a panel of teachers uh, and actually involved in the art and science of Bible study. Until then, God bless you and may he keep you is my prayer. <laughs>